the approach we're using is based on the raft protocol, which means that there's a leader and validators. Okay, so uh, how we do it's significantly different, but that's, uh, that's where we start from. Um, you can see the raft protocol concept um, actually in Solana is doing the same concept. They have a, a leader in, in validators. Um, what we do a little bit differently, which I'll diagram, is the concept that we run, the idea is to run multiple uh, parallel chains rather than a single chain. Um, that's where you get the scalability out of it. So as, as I went back to, the one thing we're focusing on the most first is scalability in a permissionless open system open blockchain and the idea there is that scale of, the way we're defining scalability is mostly around adding more resources allows the throughput to go up okay uh, that may not necessarily uh, you might include latency to do that or it doesn't necessarily mean that um, on a given transaction it goes through any faster just so you can do more of them in parallel so you're doing a load balancing type approach the uh, there's a lot of pieces to make this work. Let me just start from the diagram of it, though, to uh, make it make as much sense as possible. And let's see if it'll run now. There we go. So what this is doing is saying, OK, the client nodes are things talking to the blockchain. OK, these are whatever, wallets, anything like that. Um, I don't know how to get things to stop running. What it's going to show you is just basically the concept. I wish I could make this. How do I make it stop? All right, I can't make it stop. So um, this, this is my laptop running out of control, sorry. So what it's doing is showing that these are the leaders, they're attaching themselves to validator nodes. The nodes can be overlapped, and so they're randomly selected. That's what that's trying to show. And not all nodes are actually uh, used at any one time. You want to rotate them in and out. There's a whole bunch of things about doing that. Once a, uh, a count are, um, uh, the, the, the trick is how do I allow this to actually happen? So first I want to go through the idea. The idea of the clients, of course, are talking to leaders, either directly or through broadcasting and being sent to it. So those arrows are logical, not necessarily directly TCP connections, but they can be either. And they're just basically showing how it go through. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, a few things about it. Um, the first one is that the clients are wallets, exchange, uh, um, wallets, exchanges, um, any sort of thing, any sort of a system that's able to interact with the system. These are, of course, the validators and the leaders are logically equivalent uh, computers uh, and computer software. But as I'll discuss in a minute, the uh, CPU power of the leaders does not have to equal the CPU power of the validator nodes. The um, uh, clients um, logically um, send transactions for accounts to the either directly to a given blockchain where each one of each one of these uh, leaders is talking to a separate blockchain. Each one of these circles represents a separate blockchain. The uh, clients either send direct and you can set up a session or they do a broadcast and gets forwarded to it. Um, and then the leaders put the transactions into blocks, send them out to the validator nodes. Okay. The validator nodes on the uh, far right are nodes that have are decided they want to be part of the blockchains, but have not been accepted to, into any particular blockchain yet. And that allows us to create essentially a minimum number of nodes available before we create a new blockchain. So that you have you always have a situation where there's um, a minimum number of nodes representing an individual blockchain. Um, one of the um, issues for us is that we haven't quite decided whether or not that's a fixed number. Like we say, any given chain has to have 256 nodes or 1,000 nodes or some number like that, or whether there's a low water mark and a high water mark. And that's a question that I haven't quite figured out and what the probabilities around that are. The nodes are selected um, randomly so that when you're creating a blockchain, you're, when you're creating one of these chains, you're creating a random selection of nodes. Um, that's why we're showing that as overlap nodes, because it's possible that nodes actually participate in more than one chain at a time. Also, nodes are only allowed to uh, participate in a chain for a certain amount of time if they go back basically to the beginning 
they have to be reaccepted and re-added in so that you have a continuous rotation done with some random, random number generation to uh, avoid the takeover by any given change by um, a uh, more than uh, uh, two-thirds uh, Byzantine notes. All of these are using Byzantine fault tolerance um, initially, and then we're going to show you proof of work afterwards as well. So before I go, before I go there, this is the overall structure we're working from. That was the easiest part. <laughs> now everything else gets much more difficult. That sounds great. How the hell do we do that? <laughs> 